So, hello everybody and welcome to our Wednesday night team call. My name is Genevieve Elliott and um, Kathy Hill and I are going to be leading your call tonight. I am always so excited to be on these calls, but tonight my heart is extra excited. Uh, for those of you who know me, you already know how much these four agreements mean to me. So I've just been really, really, really looking forward to being able to share something that I'm so passionate about with all of you. So I want to thank each of you for taking the time to be here. I want... Ooh, Candy, is that you? No, that's me. Uh, um, I'm quiet now. Okay. Um, so those of you that are, you made the time to be here. It really, it really is amazing. And then there were also people in the group that knew that they weren't going to be here, but they really wanted to and are making the, figuring out what to do. It just really shows the intention. So um, my personal growth journey started, thankfully, a long time ago, probably about 18 years ago. And this book came into my life about two years ago. And it's had such a significant impact on my life and so much less drama and so much more love that I've been able to, to give, I, I believe, thanks to this book um, and the four agreements. So it's our intention tonight to give you enough of an overview and enough of a reflection of this book that you are able to see for yourself if this is something that you feel you would like to start implementing and have the book yourself yet that you'll go and you'll get the book and either listen to it or read it however you do best with your learning. Um, we are going to be leaving some time towards the end to um, have a discussion. Uh, if you guys want to ask questions, if, if there's anything that really comes up for you, I really want to encourage you. I want you to know now that we are leaving time for that. So please feel, feel free uh, towards the end of the call to, to ask questions or just make comments. Tell us what you got, how you're going to, you know, how you're going to move forward with this. So um, we have so much we want to cover. So without further ado, if you're just getting on the call and you're not yet muted, please make sure that you mute yourself. And I am going to turn it over to Kathy to start sharing about the first agreement. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm so excited to be with Genevieve to talk about these agreements. She brought this book into my life last year, so I've looked at it a couple of times and found some really interesting insights I'll try to pass along. The first of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word. And what that refers to is to speak with integrity, to say only what you mean, and to use your word for good, not to speak against yourself or against others. So to start out, by a show of hands, those of you whose hands I can see, who has ever said something they wish they could unsay? Okay, there you go. By the other token, who has ever said something they wish they could bottle and sell because it came out so right? So there's our word right there, the good and the bad out of it. So it refers to using our words, good or bad, and hopefully more for good. It's a two-edged sword. Our word has lots of power. It's not just a sound or a bunch of sounds or a bunch of symbols. It's actually very powerful. It reflects us. The word is a force. It's the strength that we have to convey ourselves to other people. We do this also in the way that we act, but it's the Things that we say, people remember them a long time. What other animal on the planet can speak or can communicate with us? No other. Doesn't that tell us how important that is? So what does it mean to be impeccable with your word? Okay, I'm a doctor. We're doing a little Latin here. Impeccable means without sin. There you go. There's my Latin for the day. If sin is something that goes against ourselves or goes against others, then being impeccable means your word does not do those things. Your word is used toward yourself and toward others in a positive way. It reflects your belief, your truths, and your goodness. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to use our words to fortify ourselves and our relationships with others. It's a positive power. 
We use it all the time. No matter what we say and under what circumstances we say it, this is our word. Interesting enough, both the law as we know it and the Isogenics Compliance Department agrees that we should use our word impeccably. We should tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Not as we see it or as it is today or as it was yesterday or somebody else says it was, but as it truly is. So that's what we're going at as our goal. If we all did that, imagine how good our relationships would be. No gossiping, no lying, no negative commentary. Those things hurt us. We take them in, we believe them, and we're stuck with them. Very hard to undo that. We are trusted and believed because of our word. People listen to us and follow us because of our word. So it's very, very important that we be consistent and that we be truthful. So this is really, really big. In my question, my reputation is defined by how truthful I am, how honest, how open, how consistent I am. That goes for any relationship, professional, personal. So what this impeccable with your word did for me was it reminded me that this doesn't just count when I'm behind the doors with a patient. It counts every time I have a relationship with someone, every time I talk to someone. That to be quite powerful, quite empowering because I was just thinking of it as being, yes, do a good job. No, be a good person. And this is part of that. It a really big difference to me. And we should be comfortable that what we said and how we've said it are something we want people to remember and that we want them to judge us by. Not that we want people to judge us, but you know that they do. So let's hope that they're thinking about the good that they heard from us. And that's what being impeccable with your word meant to me. Now, everybody is going to be able to apply and understand this a little bit differently. So that's my take. I'm going to stop there and let Genevieve go ahead and pick up with agreement number two. Thank you, Kathy. And I'm, I'm just going to add on one little piece. Um, I've read these books, this book so many times and the biggest, biggest thing that I actually got, and which is why it's so important, we're going we're gonna to overview this for you, but you're going to get what you're going to get when you read this book. And I'm listening to Kathy, and I realized that there was almost something totally different than I got, which just reinforces to me how important it is that we each read it for ourselves and are able to get what we need to get. And what I got from Be Impeccable With Your Word was that I did a pretty good job with, with being impeccable with my word with others and that I wasn't doing a great job being impeccable with my word with myself, and that hit me hard. That was actually the first or second time I read the book. Um, every time I pick it up, guys, I get something different. So I just wanted to add that in. Uh, you did such an awesome job with that, Kathy, and, um, and it, it's amazing how important it is that we really, really need to make sure that we're being good to ourselves as well with how we're speaking about ourselves, thinking about ourselves, all that kind of stuff. So. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. So we're gonna go back to a show of hands. How many of you have ever taken anything personally? <laughs> how many of you, if you think about it for just a second, how many of you have taken something personally today? <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, and I know this for myself, you don't even have to raise your hand, just be thinking about it. Was there anything in that first agreement that kind of that kind of had you like thinking about how you are with other people, stuff like that? And maybe you can actually think that you were starting to take it personally and maybe start beating yourself up a little bit because maybe you're not being impeccable in some way. It really reflects in a lot of different, a lot of different ways. So when you're taking things personally, you don't have to answer this now, but just think about it. How is that working out for you? when you're taking something really personally. Does it make you feel good? Oh, depending on what, what's going on. So, here we go. Nothing, nothing, nothing others do is because of you. Nothing others say is because of you. What they're saying and doing 
is just a complete projector, projection of their lives, their stories about their lives, their own reality. I'm going to say it one more time. Nothing others do or say is because of you. Now, how does that sit? Like, how does that feel? Like, can you, can you get that and believe it? When you think about all the times when someone, it could be a stranger, it could be someone that you actually love very much and are very close to, it, it can definitely go either way. Even when it seems so very personal, it has nothing to do with you. So uh, my very first um, challenge to you is uh, if you are taking notes, if you are thinking, I want, this is one of those things that I would like you to really be conscious of. Um, most of you is at the end of your night, but for the rest of the week, really be starting to reflect when someone says something, when you're out at the grocery store and somebody makes a snide comment, it has nothing to do with you. Like just being able to really start recognizing and practice. Just start practicing it has nothing to do with me. Um, I, I took a personal growth course, uh, years and years worth of it, but the first one's called the Landmark Forum, 18 years ago. And 18 years ago, I got this concept, and the way that it was worded then is, they are not responding to you. And I was approximately 23 years old. I was able to get, at the age of 23, that when something was going on in my personal life or anything else, that what was going on, that it had nothing to do with me. And that's been such a gift for me to have gotten that and this book really reiterates it a lot and goes into it a lot deeper. So I want to relate it for just a second to isogenics. How many of you have gotten a no? Yeah. How many of you have taken a no or a no and then a no and then a no and then a not right now and then a no thank you and then a get out of my house or whatever? How, how many of you have, had that, have taken it personally? I know I have. I definitely have taken it personally uh, before. So, and, and you know, you can be sitting there thinking, but I love it so much. I am so passionate about this. I want everybody to feel as good as I feel, right? Isn't it everybody on this call? Is that not how we feel about sharing this with others? We want everybody to have the opportunity to feel as good as us. So they say no, and we take it to mean, well, just, just, there's so many things we can make it mean. And the bottom line is, all they said was no. They just said no. That's it. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the opportunity. They're saying no because of whatever else is going on in their own story, in their own life. And I, um, I don't know if we're going to have a chance to reference it tonight, and I have not read it yet, but I really, really want to. Uh, Mike Janice has been talking about, I think it's called The Power of No, and it's on my list. Um, hopefully, he's going he's gonna to summarize it in our group, um, in our group tonight, and it, it is on my list because really I, I get the power of no, but being able to not take it personally, guys, it's going to catapult you to the next level if that's something that's been slowing you down. So one of the last things that I actually want to talk about is um, <laughs> many of you maybe didn't even know about the, the first four agreements, but there's actually a fifth agreement. There's a book just dedicated to the fifth agreement. And the only thing that I'm going to say about that is he talks in it about how we're all living in our own movie. And I've talked to uh, Don. Don's heard me talk about this one many, many times. I've referenced it so many times. He uses the analogy of going into a movie theater and you're sitting there. There's only one other person in that movie theater. And you're looking up at the screen and the characters look familiar and you're watching and you're like, seems kind of vaguely familiar, but not. And you look over and the other person in the movie theater is your mom. And what you realize is going on is that that movie is your mom's interpretation of her life, which is totally different than your interpretation of your mom's life. And then you go to the next movie theater and the only other person in there is your brother or your sister. And same thing, you recognize the characters on the screen, you're even in it. And you're going, wait a minute, that's not how it happened. Everybody is living in their own movie of their life. And if we can remember that as we walk through our lives, it's so liberating to get that again, it's their movie, your movie, nobody's wrong. We just get to, we just get to remember that and hopefully be able to respect it to a certain, to a certain extent as well and, and not be taking it personally when, when they're living life 
in their own movie. So, so much more I can say, and we're going to keep moving to make sure that we've had a chance to cover them all. So I'm going to turn it back to Kathy and not making assumptions. Okay, thank you. And before I assume anything else, this is the book. It's this thick. Everybody can get through it. It has a companion small version to keep on your bookshelf and refer to regularly. Didn't want to assume everybody knew what we were talking about. Okay, don't make assumptions. Number three, sounds a little intuitive. We all say to people, you shouldn't make assumptions. Assuming makes a you-know-what. And we, we know this. We've heard this before. But by a show of hands, how many of us know that we have made an assumption and acted based upon that assumption rather than based on true fact in some cases? And do we not repeat ourselves and do it over and over again? It's ingrained in us. We go into any situation with a preconceived set of ideas about how it's going to go. And that sometimes causes us to have missed opportunities. Let's refer this to isogenics. How many times have we looked at someone and said, they're in good shape, they really don't need this? Or they're, they're financially not in a situation where I want to talk about this. Or they're too busy, though. I'll never have time to do this. If we don't find out what the real facts are and we assume those facts, we're going to miss something. We're going to miss those opportunities. That's something we need to avoid. So how do we avoid it? We have to find the courage and the strength to ask questions. Get the facts as they truly are, not as we perceive them. Once we have an idea in our heads, it's very hard to get rid of. We believe it to be true and we act as if it is. It may not be. So we don't want to miss that. We want to communicate very clearly. We want to speak, ask questions, get answers until we're comfortable with where things really are. When I was in residency, I used to tell my residents when they were doing sign off, you need to tell each other everything necessary to care for that patient completely. It was up to the person getting the information to ask questions until they were comfortable. That holds for everything. We need to keep talking until we really understand where people are coming from and we aren't making assumptions. We do tend to do that. We're hardwired that way. We assume, and Genevieve referred to this in the last agreement, that everyone sees the way we do. That everybody sees the way we do, feels the way we do, and responds to things the same way we do. So things that we believe about ourselves, we believe about somebody else automatically because we assume that they're in the same place, and they're not. We make those assumptions and we make those errors because of it. But we also make assumptions about ourselves. We might underestimate ourselves because we assume that we could not possibly do this thing, what this thing is. So we don't want to attempt it. Again, we've lost an opportunity. So we also don't want to make assumptions about ourselves and what we can and can't do. 90-day game plan showed me that there is nothing I can't do. I just need to put it down in writing, look at it, and work it. at it. Very, very clearly understood that. And any of you that have done the mind and body, and, and this was, this really me in a big way. The program allowed me to ask myself questions, to get clearer for myself, not to make assumptions about what I could and couldn't do or didn't, didn't understand. And very, very enlightening when you figure out some things. And it also taught me, again, Genevieve referred to it before, that it's okay to say no. Don't assume that you always have to say yes. You can say no. People can say no to you, and you can accept that. We know that no is never no forever, but it's okay. We can accept that. We can not make any assumptions that it means no to me or no forever. 
Don't make any assumptions about it. It was no at this moment in time. Accept it, and we can keep moving. Making no assumptions. I thought this was very, very powerful. We do understand it intuitively, but it's deeper than that. And I really like one. This is one of my favorites. So that's agreement number three. So I'm going to once again give it back to Genevieve to tie it all together. Okay. My dog's in here with me now, so hopefully she's going to stay nice and calm because something outside my door is freaking her out. So the last of the four agreements in this book anyway is um, the last agreement is always do your best. And this is too ironic for me to not wind up bringing up. Um, I'm on my third time around of Healthy Mind and Body. Hopefully everyone on this call has done it at least once and is hopefully on maybe second or third or more. And I've been preparing for this call for a long time and especially the last few days. And I open up day 37. And what does it say right at the top of day 37? But your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you're healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. They literally quoted the summary of that fourth agreement at the top of day 37 of Healthy Mind and Body. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Mark calls tomorrow. And that was, that was there. So if you haven't gotten to day 37 yet, just watch out for that and see if you notice that when, when you get there or go back if you're past it. So always do your best. So your best is going to change from moment to moment. That, that was an interesting one for, for me to get that. We actually have a best when we're sick. We actually have a best when we're sad. We have a best when we've lost a loved one. Like that you actually have a best when you wake up and you're energized and refreshed in the morning and you have a best when you're tired at night and you have a best when you're healthy and feeling great and gosh, lots of people on this call and on our team have <laughs> lots of personal bests, Carol and others. And, you know, as opposed to when you're sick and it made me think of a time when I was literally in my bed and, and, and rolling somebody, you know, just from my bed and doing the best that I could when I really wasn't feeling well. Um, and when you're feeling happy versus sad, like we, we have a best in all those different situations. So, now, remember, I, if I haven't made it clear, I've been reading this book pretty much for the last two years. I've read it full through at least four times, and it sits on my bedside table, and I will pick it up at least a couple nights a week and just read a little bit from it. And I, I seriously get something different every time. But for this particular call, this quote really, really got me. If you try, hard, if you try too hard to do more than your best, I'm looking at somebody in particular. You will spend more energy than is needed. And in the end, your best will not be good enough. I'm going to read it again. And you guys are all going to read the book if you haven't already. But this, if you try too hard to do more than your best, yes, there is such a thing. You will spend more energy than is needed. And in the end, your best will not be good enough. Um, so getting a little vulnerable here, I guess. So this really hit home for me because it helped me to realize that sometimes I am trying too hard. I'm actually pushing. I'm, I'm trying to do things in a way that I've seen others do it and I admire and I want to do it the way they're doing it because that means that I'm going to do the same things and have the same things that they have. And it doesn't work. And at least a couple people on this call um, who have loved me and supported me so much over the years have watched um, and been with me as I've, I've done these kinds of things. And um, it always comes, comes back to that I've, I've got to figure out my, my way to do it because otherwise it winds up being uncomfortable and inauthentic. And I wind up feeling frustrated and discouraged. And this journey, this journey of life, this journey that we're all on together on this amazing team is definitely not about being uncomfortable and inauthentic and discouraged. So it really had me thinking about just in the last few days, so this isn't, this, this just came up for me. I could actually be spending less time on my business and be so much more productive and so much more happy than 
quote unquote, forcing myself to be in my chair a certain amount of hours per day because that's how it's supposed to be. And it's not, it's not feeling right. Whereas if I maybe back off a little with more and get the authenticity back and get that and make sure that I keep the me in it while making sure that I'm doing my best in every other area with my children, with my friends, with, you know, every other area of my life with this dog of mine, that guys, this dog drives me crazy. It, it pertains to the animals. It does. I see you smiling, Jake. Like it really, I've, I've been thinking about it with her, with her in particular. Don't, you can call me crazy if you want to, because I'm not going to take it personally. Um, it really makes a difference in every area. So when you're doing your best, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel good whether you're having results or not. It's going to, it's going to feel good in your heart. It's going to feel right. And even if you're, oh, I said, even if you're not achieving a certain result. So doing your best is taking action because you love it. And this really struck me too, um, because I really do love what I do. So when there are times when it's not feeling like I am, then I know I'm trying too hard. Or I have to take an even deeper look, and this is probably a lot harder, and recognize and really ask myself, am I actually doing my best? Am I doing less than my best? And um, that's probably harder to take, to be, to be able to really take a look at that and say, am I truly doing the best job that I can be? So I wanna finish up this particular part by putting two quotes together from this last agreement. You were born with the right to be happy. You were born with the right to love, to enjoy, and to share your love. You're alive, so take your life and enjoy it. We don't need to know or prove anything. Just to be, to take a risk and enjoy your life is all that matters. Say no when you want to say no. We've heard that a couple times tonight. And yes when you want to say yes. You have the right to be you. You can only be you when you do your best. Yeah, and I just feel like it sums it up so perfectly. Um, and, you know, Kathy and I have been, we spent a lot of time preparing for this call and going over things, and, and there's definitely more that we could be saying and sharing. And um, I'm so passionate about living and sharing these agreements, but I really wanted to turn it over to you guys I said at the beginning we were going to do this. I want to turn it over to you. And if you would like to ask something, I actually haven't had a chance to check the chat. If you'd like to ask something, if there's something that has resonated you, with you that you would like to share, um, we would especially like to hear from those of you who might be guests or who um, maybe you don't necessarily regularly speak up. And it's okay if you're not um, on Zoom, if you're just on your phone, just make sure that you unmute yourself before you speak. And uh, we'll give you a second to do that. And what have you learned? What would you like to know? Where will you go from here? We'd like to know at this point if anybody has anything that they'd like to share or ask. You hear me? Yes, Tori. Okay. Hi, um, I just have a question in reading the book. You said that you've read it four times, so you'd be a good um, person to recommend. Do you think someone should sit down and read the whole thing, or should they read you know, parts of it a little each night like you've been doing? Uh, well, definitely read the whole thing. I, I mean, I, I, I read the whole thing through however many times, and the first time I, I did it, I definitely read the whole book. And that's, that's actually, thank you for asking that, because if I haven't been clear about that part, um, Kathy and I shared our own perspectives on this book and each one of you could pick it up and get something totally different, have something completely different resonate with you. So absolutely uh, read it cover to cover and get what you're meant to get and then don't put it away. That's the thing about this book. Don't put it away. Keep it handy and when you're having a time, my suggestion is pick it back up. I literally will just like open to a page or if I know something particular is going on, I'll specifically go to the section where I know I'm needing a little bit of reinforcement and it's been, a, it's been such a great resource for that. So thank you for asking. 
Is there anybody else that has anything they'd like to share or ask or say? We have other things we'd like. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I share Genevieve's passion for this book. And um, I would just say that when you find yourself in a condition of an upset, I find that if I find that if I'm in a condition of an upset, if I, if I go through all four agreements and I can usually figure out, it helps me key in and figure out what's going on. I'm upset. So am I being impeccable with my word? Yes or no. Am I taking it personally? Which is, it's probably, <laughs> probably where it is. Well, no, you never know. You run through those four things and usually you'll find it, it you'll figure it out. You'll find what's causing the upset and, and it'll help you deal with it a little bit better. Um, and that's one thing I wanted to say. And the other thing I wanted to say, um, I, I just came back from a week of uh, personal growth training. And um, one of the things that really, really, and it might be hard to wrap your head around and still um, processing it is that it kind of ties in with, you know, don't take things personally. And it's that um, nobody can hurt you. Nobody can hurt you. O only you can let yourself be hurt by something that's happened, i.e. you're taking it personally or whatever. And so that kind of ties in with it. Um, and I think that, you know, the more work that you do, the more books that you read, you take this book, right, Jen? You've got all the, the four agreements, and then you bring other things into it, and, and it even expands what's there even more, I think. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we, um, we had actually asked, I, I asked a couple of other people to share what they're reading right now, or a book that they've actually, a personal growth book that they have, have read in the past that's made a difference to them, and, and each person is just going to share really, really quickly, and the idea here, I mean, I literally, I, I, I got my stack right, I mean, there's a stack of six, seven, I don't know, I'm a personal growth junkie, everybody, um, so but I, we wanted to hear from some other people so that you guys could kind of get a list going. For some of you, this is like, holy cow, this is a, this is a whole new realm. For, the, for some others of you, you've, you've already started down this path and, and um, you just might be really ready to take on some, some, new, uh, some new personal growth resources. So um, Tara, can you share with us a little bit about The Carpenter? Yes, okay, so everybody, this is The Carpenter. Um, thank you, Genevieve. That was awesome. My four agreements came today in the mail. Um, so this is the carpenter. I bought it for all my leaders and I asked that they distribute it. They read it and distribute it to their team. So, um, definitely a lot of people have that book. So the carpenter is one book that is recommended by Tracy O'Malley and I am on my third time reading it and I got it like three weeks ago. So you can read this over and over and over and over again and learn more. So basically there are three principles three timeless principles to help you stand out, excel, and make an impact on the world. And those three principles are love, serve, and care. Love, serve, and care. And you know what? I could do a half hour call on this, and I have four pages of notes, but I'm going to go make it real small. So the secret to life and the greatest success strategy of all is to love all of it and fear none of it. Love all of it fear none of it. If you want to build your isogenics business, love your associates, associates, invest in a relationship with them. And when you love your associates, they will multiply. Love on them guys. If they're just starting, check in with them every single day. Love, love, love. The more love you give them, the more, the more it, your team is going to grow. I mean, it, it, it honestly is. Principle number two is serve. Um, because we love, we serve. And when we serve others, we fill up their cup with love and our own as well. So when, by serving others, we fill their cup with love. The greatest isogenic success, success stories succeed because they love and they serve their associates. It's also important you teach your team 
on how to serve others. Because if you just did it and nobody on your team did it, you know, you want to teach this. That's why I'm getting this book kind of going around here. Um, when a team is committed to serving one another rather than their own selfish desires, they become very powerful and accomplish amazing things. Number three, care. Always remember that great teams that care are composed of people who care greatly and it all starts with you. When you care, you will inspire, inspire others to care. Surround yourself with people that care. Then together, take action and show you care. Go beyond the expected, beyond the expected. Really show people you care. It could be as simple as a text or a phone call, but really show them that you care. And, um, wait a second here. So everyone, everyone on your team must live it, breathe it, and share it. Love deeper, serve greater, and care more. Guys, there will be days where you do not want to get out of bed or moments where the last thing you want to do is to love, serve, and care, okay? It is during these times you need to remember your why. When you know your why, you will find a way to love, to serve, and to care, other, to care for others. Um, if you want to impact millions of people, you have to start with one person. You have to show them that you care. And these last two things, don't focus on building your business. Focus on using your business to love, serve, care, and build up others. If you do this, your business will build and multiply exponentially. If you aren't, you aren't a true success unless you are helping others be successful. Success is meant to be shared. Okay, so I love this book, um, The Carpenter by um, John Gordon. Um, pick it up on Amazon for like 10 bucks or something. So, And give it to your team. Let them read it. Thanks, Genevieve. Thanks, Tara. And uh, we, uh, we're going to go right into, Tori actually has a concept from that same, Tori, it's the same, you have to unmute, there you go. It's the same yeah. author, same guy, right? Yeah, it's John Gordon as well. I've followed him for uh, for years. I've loved his work, um, The Carpenter, The Energy Bus. He's done a lot of things. He's worked with a lot of uh, national teams and things as well. Um, one of the concepts that really jumped out at me a couple of years ago that he came up with is this concept of one word. And he um, um, promotes it a lot in the beginning of the year, but really it's it's something you can grasp at any time. And I think this time of the year is a great time to try it out for a couple of months and then maybe look for another word for 2017. Um, but a lot of times smart goals, you know, we've heard of smart goals and they can be very for, you know, overwhelming because you got to think of all these different concepts with, you know, setting out your goals and lots of details. So um, is what John Gordon came up with is this one word concept is you pick one word and that's actually kind of hard to do. And it's one word that's going to help you focus your life and help you move forward for the year. And then you wrap everything around that. And is what I do is I focus back on that word um, to you know, see whether or not what I'm doing is um, going to help me reach that, that one word. For me, it happens to be a reach this year. Um, I want to show you something on my wall. I don't know if you can see it. it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Hold on. See that? Can you see that black up in the upper corner up there? That says freedom. I actually um, painted on my wall. That's um, chalkboard paint, and I wrote my word up there, and that's my word for this year. So every time I step up out of my office, I see it, and um, uh, it reminds me. So is what I would say is like, okay, is going out and going to some event going to help me build my freedom? Okay, yes, then I'm going to go do it, and I worked around that one word, and I just, I think it really helps you stay on track. It keeps things really simple. Um, and we did it one year as a team. We actually came up with words and then I created notebooks for everybody. So maybe we should do that again this year. Um, if everybody tests out a word this fall, we could all come up with another word to go forward in 2017 as well. I will post some links. You can actually make your one word little poster and um, I'll post some links in the event tonight for um, other resources to find that. And he has a nice video on it as well. So hopefully that helps someone. Perfect, Tori. Thank you so much. That was that was awesome. I actually put in the thread that uh, 
I mean, cause you've done this for us for a while. And my, my one word for 2016 is trust and it's up. I can't, well, I probably could have picked it up, but uh, it's up over here on my board and um, I have it, you know, it's, it's just always a reminder right there for me. So thank you for that. Um, and now we're going to, Dawn, I'd like for you to share just a couple minutes about the slight edge and then you can also just let everybody know about the call for next week and then we'll wrap up. Is Mike going to share? Uh, we, no, we're going to, we might, nope, we're good. Okay. Okay. Super quick. The slight edge. The one thing you're going to get out of it is that it is the things that are easy to do and just as easy not to do every day. That is what's going to make the difference in your life. Just that, and that's, that's the phrase. It's the things that are easy to do and just as easy not to do that make a difference. So I think for a lot of people, this is an easy example. Like um, maybe you're just starting out and say, you know what? I want to get in better shape. And so I'm going to exercise 15 minutes a day. Tara, don't laugh. So 15 minutes a day, right? That's easy to do, right, everybody? 15 minutes of exercise, that's easy to do, right? And it's also really easy not to do it. But when you do the thing you say you're going to do every day, that's when you're going to be moving in the direction of your dreams. Um, he also says, consistently repeated daily action plus time equals unconquerable results. No one fails overnight and no one succeeds overnight. So it's the things you do. It's consistent, persistent action. It's the things you do every day, the things that are easy to do, any given thing, easy to do, but also easy not to do. And um, it, this is this is also it's a short book. It's really quick reads. Probably I don't know a couple hours, three hours. And Robin, we read the book at about the same time, didn't we? And that it, did that stick with you? It's the things that are easy to do and the things that are easy not to do every day. Does that does that ring in your head? Yeah, but I mean the cool thing is the graph that he does. Basically, everyone starts off the same, and the people that are doing the things that they're supposed to do go this way, and the people that are doing the things that you know the easy not to do go this way. And then there's a huge gap. And so when you do the things consistently, you're up in the 5% and the other people are in the 95%. And that's just that the whole visual was just a huge confirmation of just daily consistent action. The example that he uses is flossing your teeth. And that just always sticks the slight edge, flossing teeth. It always just sticks in my head. Again. <laughs> flossing your teeth is easy to do and it's easy not to do. If you don't floss your teeth, you're going to lose your teeth. If you floss your teeth, you're going to keep your teeth and keep healthy gums and you know, it's the same thing with your business. And it's, you know, it is, it's so true. It's, it's easy not to do. It's easy to say, oh, I'm not going to do that today versus I promised myself I was going to get that done and I'm going to get it done. So yeah, it's a good, it's one of my favorite books. Um, same. And there's also little worksheets at the end of every chapter that you can do. It's really, it's pretty interactive. It's really, it's a great book. I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, so super quick call for next week. I'm really excited. Uh, we referenced it a little bit in this call. Um, Genevieve referenced uh, Landmark Forum, which she's done a lot of work with. Robin and I have done a lot of personal growth training through a company called Size Seminars. And that's I actually last week, uh, or week before last, I was up at a Size Seminar training up at the uh, ranch in California. And so... We're gonna, what we're going to talk about is going from <clears throat> reading personal growth books and trying to learn through reading and maybe through watching some videos or whatever and actually taking it, to the, taking it to the next level, taking that next step, which is to actually engage in going to different events, different courses, different um, activities that will help you grow even more as a person grow in your business. I mean, they say it all the time. Network marketing is personal growth with a compensation plan attached. I mean, this, this stuff is really important. This is, we don't talk about, it's really important. And so next week we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about that. I'll also share a little bit about, um, my trip to Peru was actually also a personal growth adventure with a little bit of touring and fun attached. So I'm going to share, 
um, some of those things. We shared books this time. Next time we're going to share courses and um, activities that we think might be beneficial to you. That's it. Out. Perfect. Thank you, Don. Um, I was actually saying when we were prepping for this call, I was saying, I think this wraps it up perfectly, that why I get so excited, why I'm so passionate about this, and, and why I feel so honored to be able to bring this to you tonight is the idea of all of us being able to communicate with each other and, and have an intention with each other where we're, where we're living these four agreements, where we're living the concepts from the carpenter, where we're really, really living into our one word, where we're supporting each other in doing those little things that you know, are easy to do or easy not to do. When we all start speaking this language together, think about it, guys. Think about how much more powerful we can be, not only with each other and supporting each other, but when we go out into the world and like, it just makes my heart want to explode. So I'm so very, very glad that each of you has joined us. And, and um, I really, really hope that you got something out of being here. If you're willing to share what you got, I'd love to hear it. If not, that's okay too. And I also just wanted to let you know that I'd be honored to be a personal growth accountability partner to anyone who wants it. I, 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 that's it. That lights me up all the time, all the time. So thank you all. Thank you, every single one of you. And we are wrapping it up and have a wonderful night, everybody. Thank you, Kathy, for being so awesome and doing such a great job too. Thank you.